Well, Ian, congratulations on your victory. I know you got to walk in to uh, hear some potential criticism of it, but uh, what are your th initial thoughts after the fight? I mean, firstly, that's ridiculous. 7-0 and in the UFC, the second person ever to go 7-0 and in the welterweight division, the current longest active win streak in welterweight. What was listless about, out of curiosity, from your point of view? Footwork, speed, elusivity. If Jeff Neal was running at you swinging bombs, what would you do? You'd fucking run. Do you know what I mean? Like, that dude hits like a truck. My job is to make him miss and to counter. My job is to upset his rhythm, upset his footwork, and find avenues to take advantage of his mistakes. That was the best Jeff Neal we've seen today. He didn't bite on feints. He didn't bite on reactions as well as he normally did. And he hits like a truck. Do you know what I mean? The truth is, he slowed the fight down and grappled because he wasn't happy with the strike and he was having. He slowed the fight down and tried to grapple and take me down. Another person who couldn't. And the truth is, my speed and my, my accuracy and my footwork, it just tricks people. And they're just on the end of my rope and I just pull them in and I take advantage of them. So, look, say what you want, have whatever opinion you want. My hand got raised, I've, I'm breaking records again, I'm doing what I do, and I'm still not done. I've got so much time to go, so, yeah. Are you happy with it? I mean, are you happy with the way it turned out? Because, you know, you're saying, hey, it was a win, and I don't care what you say. But, like, you know, as you said, he was maybe more difficult. I think you had a lot of respect for him, but I think he was maybe even more difficult than you thought he would be tonight. If I got dropped 14 times in a round and still managed to win, I'd still be happy with myself. My job is to get my hand raised. If I went out there and got beaten for 14 minutes and I knocked him out, I'm still happy I got my hand raised. I am my harshest critic. I will go back and I will watch the fight. I know I... I wish I was able to set up a bit more kicks and make the fluidity of the combinations what I normally see, but the truth is, if you crack Jeff Neal or you take an inch too much, he's going to put you unconscious, and you have to respect that. There isn't many people in the, in the welterweight division that possess the power he has in that hand. So you've got to respect it, you've got to give it the time it deserves, and you've got to... Ma like, you've got to... Find that way to, to find that success. I mean, he started leaning. I started making him lean. I started making him lean. Do you see those knees to the face? I'm fucking surprised he took some of them. Do you know what I mean? He ate two or three clean. And that was because I'm making him reach. That's because of my discontrol, my footwork. I am such an intelligent fighter that if I go out there for 15 minutes, I can fight for two more rounds. I can fight for 25 minutes. I can do it clean. I can do it like amazingly. And I can do it and not take a hell of a lot of damage. That's, that's the most important thing. I want to be active. I want to continue to fight. If I go out there and let Jeff, he Jeff Neal hit me 40 times, chances are I'm not going to be able to turn around quite quickly, right? I can. Give me two or three weeks off. I'm going on holiday for you and my family now. I'm going to rest, recover, go have some sun, some beach. And then we'll try to book that Kobe date next. You know what I mean? That's what I want next. So let's make it happen. Outside of the fight itself, what did you think of fight week? I mean, you know, you're flipping off the crowd and telling them, I don't care if you're booing me. I mean, you're kind of embracing, I guess, people disliking you, but is that hard for you? I mean, I can't imagine, like, you come in saying, I don't want people to like me. I don't want fans. I want to get booed. I mean, is that, is that difficult for you? I don't care what people love me or hate me. I'm doing what I love. I'm a kid who had a dream, and I'm up here living it. Do you know what I mean? I watched Connor go through everything that he went through and Oh, I just want to, that's, that's what the life I want to live. I want to put on a show. I want to, I want to fight for a living. I want to travel the world and train with the best coaches in the world, the best teammates on the planet. And I'm living my dream. And there's no one that can wipe that smile off my face. And there's still nobody in the world that can take that O off me. And I'm going to keep proving that. And whether they love me or hate me, whether they cheer, they boo. If my hand gets raised, I'm still going to become a world champion, whether they like it or not. Last thing for me. You know, when you came into the USC, you said, look, I'm not in a rush. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm building myself here. But, you know, where you stand now, and you're talking about Colby Covington, who's right up at the top of the division. I mean, you, you get that fight and get that win. Are we talking about world title fights at that point? Uh, no, I want to earn it. I really want to earn it so that people don't say it's listless and it's undeserved. I think it's ridiculous that people say we rush up the ladder. For me, I, don't, I never want that on my career. That's my third top 15 guy. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to beat Kobe Covington like we've never seen before. And then I want a top three opponent 
someone who's in that title contention because the truth is Kobe's biggest claim to fame is he's fought for three world titles and he's lost all three. He's not as good as people think he is. You get beaten by a young, talented, up-and-coming prospect, one of the best we've ever seen, you don't come back from that. And the truth is, I'll match him pace for pace on cardio. I'll match him for output. He doesn't possess anywhere near the power Jeff Neal does. He has great wrestling. Cool, put me on my back. I'm training with Damian Maya. See what happens if you put me on my back. I'll choke him unconscious. I promise you, I will end that fight. I'll finish that fight, and I'll rid, UFC of, rid the UFC of Kobe Covington for once and for all. Like, he needs to be gone. I'm sick of his nonsense. He's a piece of shit. Yeah, no, here. Yeah. Um, just kind of going off that, you laid Thank out you. you laid up the, the upside of a Colby fight in terms of ranking and all that stuff pretty well, but the flip side of it is we know the type of things he's going to say and what he's going to do to build a fight. Um, it seems like, you know, given just where you've gone mentally in the past few months, is that something you would embrace, be ready for, dread? Let him write his script. Let him do the panto. Let him do the act. Let him do everything. I'm going to get to punch him in the face. He can talk about me, my wife, my family, my kids. He can talk about whatever he wants. He gets the pass because he's going to sign the contract. As long as he shows up and bees a man, I will punch the mouth off him, and I hope I hit him so hard he's never able to speak again. And you said earlier this week, um, got a little bit of backlash from the comment about maybe being too big to headline in Ireland, and I think maybe people didn't understand. They took that the wrong way. Yeah, do you just kind of want to explain and maybe people who didn't understand that? What I mean is that I don't want to become too highly ranked and too important for the UFC to not put on pay-per-views. I want to bring the UFC back to Ireland. I've got my fucking shat, like my bleeding Paddy's Day dunks on. Like I'm trying to get the UFC back to Dublin. I'm trying to do it. But the truth is, I'm fighting on the biggest cards in the world. I'm fighting the next best guy. And I'm moving, and I need the UFC to help me bring them back. What I mean by getting too big is I don't want to become the world champion. And then the UFC go, yeah, you're fighting in America. You're fighting in the biggest stadiums. Ireland doesn't have a stadium big enough for it. And if they couldn't fucking do it with Conor McGregor, then the chances are they're probably not going to do it with anyone ever again. Do you know what I mean? So, like, people took that the wrong way. It's, yeah, I think all, everyone got what I meant, and the people that didn't just ran with it. So, thank you for helping me there. Ian, right here. What's up, sir? How are you? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. Ian, obviously, there's been so much going back to, you know, last November, December, mm -hmm. and your family being at the center of it. Can you just talk a little bit about those conversations at home and just having that support and strength to get through everything and all that outside noise that has been going on in the media? My wife has a smile on her face tonight. My little boy is at home in bed asleep. We go to Bahia on holiday on the weekend. Nothing that is said online or by people who are completely irrelevant matters to me or my family. There was a time at which it did hurt and there was a time at which it did sting to have people, and still to this day, it still stings. But the truth is, we're living our dream, we're traveling the world, we're happy and we're proud of what we do as parents, as, as a couple, as soulmates. People can talk all the shit in the world at the end of the day my hand's getting raised, my wife is happy, my kids are happy, my family's doing amazing things, and I keep winning. So unless any of that changes, I'm not changing a single thing. If there's a reason that you don't love me later, then maybe we'll talk. But until you keep smiling, we're going to keep running with it. And then uh, can you walk me through a little bit? You're in the back. You're obviously getting ready. You know the crowd is probably going to make some noise again when you get out there. Just what's going through your mind when you finally go through that curtain? I had a little cry backstage like I always do. Pulled my team close, prayed with them, let out all the emotions before I, I went on my journey. Let it all out. Let the tears flow. Thank the Lord for the power I possess, the ability I possess. Asked him to give me his speed, and boy, did he give it to me. I was fast tonight. I was elusive tonight. The amount of videos you could chop up of Jeff swinging and missing tonight is impressive. I'm just very grateful to have the people around me I have to be able to make the walk so actively and so consistently. It's not, there's no, like, the truth is, had I fought, with a, if, had I not gotten pneumonia, I would have fought fucking five, six times in the last 12 months. There isn't people like me in this sport that's active. I'm going to turn around and make this Kobe fight as as soon as I possibly can on the biggest card I can. And after that, I'm going to go towards the end of the year and get another big opponent. I've done too many fights that people can't keep up. I'm 7-0 in the UFC. Do you know the second guy ever to go 7-0 after Kamaru Usman? 
So say what you want about my performances, say what you want about me, the speed, the power, the intelligence, everything is there. And I'm just gonna keep that proving that I am right, that I'm gonna get that bell wrapped around me, I'm gonna do it my way, and I'm gonna have a smile on my face when it gets there. Appreciate you. Ian, just, just curious, uh, whose idea was it to uh, use Layla as a walkout song tonight? Layla has been my walkout song, song for the last four or five songs now, four, four or five fights, and the reason behind it is because I love that woman. And when I fight, it's to make sure that she knows that I love her and everything's gonna be okay. And I'm gonna go out there and I got that, but more than ever tonight, it meant so much. To know that I'm playing her song to all these fucking dickheads in the stands who are booing her and saying shit. Truth is, she's the only person that matters in that, in that stadium at that time. I wanna put a smile on her face and I love her. She's my wife, I've got a name tattooed on my body. She's the mother of my child. I don't care what people have to say. She's got a smile on her face. She enjoys the show. That's all that matters. And last one for me. Why didn't you go with the unplugged version? Uh, I don't know. I like that one. I just, I don't know. The guitar does differently. The, my favorite one is the acoustic version, but it ain't got the, uh, the, the oomph. The energy. The oomph for a, a walkout song. But uh, I like that one a lot. I think maybe talk to the UFC about the unplugged version. Maybe that's on them with the rights. <laughs> I appreciate you. Hey, Ian. What's um, up? In case Colby turns, turns you down. He doesn't have a choice. <laughs> he doesn't have a choice. He's lost three title fights. He doesn't have a choice. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but there is no other fucking option for him. Who else are they going to put? He's not going to sign to fight grapplers, that's for sure. He's not going to fight Wonderboy Thompson. Do you know what I mean? What's the point of putting them two together? He's going to fight. He's going to do what he's fucking told, and he's going to fight a young up-and-coming prospect so I can fucking take him out of the vision, wipe him off the, off the top 15, and the UFC can go, great, right, that's been great. Let's take that and run with it. So now, last question, sorry. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> um, you know, he has a history of turning down fights. So uh -huh. if, if he does turn it down, like, are you open to, to fight a young prospect like a Jack Della, Sean Brady, Shavkat, or do you want, like, a Stephen Thompson, Colby, as someone who's fought for a title? I am a fighter who says yes. I don't say no. I don't be picky. I say yes, where, when. That's it. The truth is, I call out who I want. Kobe's the biggest name in the division without a title. Going out and beating him does so much. He also, look, I might be talking shit about him. There's a lot of respect on his name from all the MMA community. Do you know what I mean? He wrestles hard, he puts output in fights, but he's just no way, he's not one tenth of the fighter I am. And it's my job to go out there and prove that. And I would do that with a smile on my face. I don't believe he's in a position to be picking and choosing his fights now. If he wants to fight, he's gonna do what he's told. And I'm sure Hunter and Dana will tell him that. And then finally, there was a clip that came out today of you, of you checking some fans that were uh, talking about your wife. Oh, my God. He's <laughs> a fucking dickhead. He said, get that crazy lady out of your car. I told her to stop the fucking car. Come over and say that to her face. He folded. He folded. People, honestly, it happened today. I'm not going to mention names or who it did, but someone fucking said something to me outside. And I just was like, oi, get the fuck back here. Talk to me. Calm down. When you put someone on the spot, and you call them out for the shit they've said, they crumble. It's like you can see the masculinity in them go, oh, I fucked up and now he's gonna hurt me. Like, it just changes. When you call people out, we've all seen it, whether it's a boss at work or, you know, a, a child who knows they fucked up and they go, uh-oh, and they look at you. It's like, you can see it in people's eyes. When you call people out for the shit they say, it, you need to, do you know what I mean? Justice is important. That guy needed it, he was a fucking arsehole. Sorry for my language. You know, we're here. Obviously, this fight week, you were kind of welcomed as, like, the villain of that fight. So are you going to embrace this role going forward, or is it just something that doesn't really cross your mind? I couldn't care less. I have a smile on my face. I'm a happy, proud man. I don't care what people are saying. I don't care what the noise is. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to show up. I'm going to make weight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to get my hand raised. And that's all that matters to me, man. I, I genuinely can't get that across enough. Awesome. And obviously, you fought Vegas, Charlotte, Boston, MSG, now California. Which has been your favorite place and why? Really, I genuinely love California. I think the weather, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's got the beach, it's got the green, it's got, I like golf, it's got some really good golf courses. It's just been a really, really calm, peaceful city to be in and I'm very happy that we got to experience it. That's one thing that I love to do about traveling the world. It's, I knew the travel would come and now the success is coming, the travel's getting greater and I get to experience many, many places and different cultures and I love it. And I saw that you had those dunks on. Are you big? Of, are you a big shoe head or sneaker head or not? I'm, I'm getting more into it. I'm getting more into it. I'm getting my little collection on, but I'm getting there. I like them. I like them a lot. I need to get more knowledgeable on them, though.
Congratulations. Appreciate you, man. Ian, as a fellow vegan, what is your post-fight uh, celebratory meal looking like? I'm going to go find a nice vegan pizza. I'm going to chill out. I'm going to eat it. The truth is, veganism has changed my game. It's, it's given me the ability to be that fresh in the third round and keep that moving, keep that speed, and do everything I'm doing. So, yeah, I'm going to keep running with it. I'm going to keep doing it. And I, I genuinely believe it means all the world to me for success. And the way in which I cut weight because of the vegan diet means that I'm more hydrated and I can take those shots from a Jeff Neal, I can absorb those shots and I can recover so quickly. And that's genuinely the most important thing to me. Health is everything. Have you had any good vegan food here in LA? I know there's a lot of good spots here. No, I had my, I had my nutritionist here and he makes all my meals for me. He, he looks after me, he protects me. He makes sure that I've got the immune system during fight week when people normally get sick and they drop. Obviously after the last fight, we had to make sure of that. But you know, we just made sure that everything was Spick and span, A1, and we just looked after ourselves and do what we do best. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much.